We are live. Awesome. We are live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Barefoot uh, Science live video. Now, that's not B E A R, like bears in the woods and their feet. This is bear, B A R E, no <laughs> shoes on. Um, what you need today is if you can have uh, a towel, okay? and some kind of massage ball or tennis ball or golf ball if you want to join in. Hopefully you join in. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have a look at a little bit of structure in the foot and that'll just take a few minutes and then we're going to go through the strategies and that'll only take a few minutes as well. So, uh, in our feet we've got approximately 20 to 25% of your entire body's joints are located in your feet. That's Pretty amazing for performance, okay? Um, on the bottom of your foot, you've got around about 200,000 nerve endings in each foot, on, in the sole of the foot, which will become apparent why that's important later on. And then also the big toe is absolutely essential for most functional movements. Um, whether you're talking about beginning to walk or slowing down and stopping or moving sideways or stopping moving sideways or just standing still. If you don't have a big toe functioning properly then those tasks are going to be harder. <laughs> I've got a tissue on my nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all I want to have a look at shoes and uh, what's going on with your shoes and why this is going to affect you in sometimes a negative way. Let's have a look at a typical uh, business shoe first of all. It's got a heel on the bottom and that means that you're being jacked up at the back. When your foot is jacked up at the back it means that your calf muscle is going to be shorter than it normally should be. Okay, So instantly you're getting with these shoes you're getting a calf contraction, you're getting energy into the back of the lower leg there uh, and when that's occurring all day uh, and sitting down in a chair does this to you as well, then you're making the calf muscle short, tight, short, tight, short, tight, short, tight, um, and the joint, the ankle joint, is going to be uh, out of balance. The next thing, movability. Your foot is supposed to be able to move sideways and forwards and backwards and rotation as well. But let's look at how the average business shoe turns, say, in a rotation sense. Okay, we've got zero, absolutely zero along that axis there. Let's look at forwards and backwards movement. Well, we've got like one favoured area of the foot that does move, but nothing else is going to move. And then sideways, how can it go like into a sideways squash? Okay, and it, it just can't. I just can't bend that sole anyway. But my actual foot, when I'm moving through reality, it's supposed to be able to decelerate and accelerate sideways, it's supposed to be able to absorb rotation and of course forwards and backwards movement. Again, decelerating and accelerating. So uh, if you look at say my most minimalist shoe, that has got a thousand degrees more twist and it can go into the smallest little ball in a forwards to backwards sense and sideways it can go as well. Okay, so when you're thinking about getting foot health, you obviously don't want to transition too fast. Don't go from wearing rigid shoes to being barefoot all the time. Um, there are sensible ways to do it. Like if you were going to do a run and you wanted to start learning how to do barefoot running, then maybe I would go, whatever your total distance is, take about 5% of that and walk, not run. And then we gradually build it up with no more than 5% increases little snacks throughout that exercise session. When you're working out at home, barefoot's fantastic. Now, the other thing about shoes, if you remember I mentioned back over here that you've got about 200,000 nerve endings in the sole of each foot. Okay, so look at what's on the bottom of your average shoe. Uh, let's go to an athletic shoe. Look how thick that sole is, okay? You're putting a layer directly between you and gravity. So those 200,000 nerve endings on the bottom of your foot, they can't hear gravity. It's a bit like going to a very important lecture and the lecturer is out the front and they're talking, but you've got your fingers in your ears and you can't hear a thing they're saying. Now they're still talking, the energy is still hitting you, but you can't deal with it because you've blocked it. Similar to the sole of your shoe. So when you get barefoot, then you start to be able to receive messages much more quickly, much more easily. Okay, 
Uh, what else do I have to talk about there? I think that's about all of that talk. So let's go now to, uh, oh, I know. I wanted to show you the, the connection between the foot and the rest of the body. So uh, can you see my ankles and you can see my head? Perfect. Everybody at home, you must do this with me. All right. So I want you to have your feet in some kind of comfortable position facing roughly forwards. All right. And we're going to leave them nice and flat on the floor. Just make sure they're not sort of turned out into a slouching default position. They don't have to be rigidly parallel, but just sort of basically facing forwards. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my left arm, okay, that's the one I've got my watch on, in case this camera is reversed or something, and I'm going to turn around, and I will let my knees come with me for this movement, and I want to take a mental visual snapshot of what I can see when I've turned as far as I can. So join me in this. Take your left arm, turn around, turn around, turn around. What can I see? Well, I can see the clock over there, and I can point a bit further than the clock. Okay, and that was with my feet being allowed to move. Now let's restrict the feet, okay? Now, being human, we are bipedal, which means that the left shoulder and the right hip work together, yeah? When we're walking, there's a stretch contraction cycle that goes across the body. So, because I'm using my left arm, I'm gonna restrict my right foot. And all I'm gonna do is turn my right foot up onto the side. It's as if I had uh, foam, and this is my wife's phone, <clears throat> and she will kill me if I squash it. So I'm going to put my foot just up on the edge, enough that I could put a phone under there and not squash the phone. I'm very, very cautious not to smash this phone. I didn't bend the knee or push my hips out, okay? I've just got edged up on the side there, like that, okay? And the other foot is nice and flat. Toes spread if you, if you can. Okay, so now we're going to repeat the original thing. Can you see my shoulders? Okay, so we're doing the same movement of the left arm and rotating to the left, but our right foot is restricted in that side plane. Okay, keep it still. Let's go. What can we see? How far can we go? Okay, if I want to squash my wife's phone, I could go further, but she's shaking her head at me, so I won't. Please don't. I can see the edge of that board. Yep. When my foot was flat, I had at least 90 degrees more movement. So what's going on there? How did changing my foot just a couple of centimeters through the sideways plane change my spinal rotation through the transverse plane by like 90 degrees? How far is that? From here to here, that movement I just completely lost because my foot wasn't allowed to move. So now we start to see if you're restricting your foot all the time, let alone this shape of the foot where it's totally squashed in all day. Now these are great for protecting you. They, they keep your feet warm and dry. They stop you stepping on sharp things. I'm not saying shoes are bad, okay? As my good friend Ian O'Dwyer always says, it's not a good thing, it's not a bad thing, it's just a thing, okay? However, sometimes we don't need it in some situations. And when you wanna get the whole of your body to move, then you need the whole of the body to move. So if you're locking 25% of your body and then expecting the rest of it to do its job properly, you're fooling yourself, okay? So we get our feet, um, get, get our feet free and we get our body free. So, first thing we're gonna do is take our massage ball, whichever you've got, golf ball, um, tennis ball. Tennis ball's okay, but it's very, very soft. So if you can get a harder ball, um, but it shouldn't feel painful, okay? It should just feel like you're applying some stretch to the muscle. So for some people, tennis ball is gonna be fine. And all we're gonna do, holding on, I'll use my spiky ball because I believe that's the Rolls Royce of the situation. I'm holding on to a wall or a chair or I'm sitting down and I put my foot on top and I'm gonna spend around about 20, 20 to 30 seconds just massaging everything I can on the underside of the foot. I'm going right to the outside, right to the back, and it shouldn't feel like you're walking on a, a bed of hot coals or a bed of nails. You're just feeling that there's some, some love being given back to the foot. And these balls are fantastic with these spikes on them because they oxygenate the, the tissue. They're allowing lots of points of contact. They're changing the, the shape of each of the muscles and they're allowing um, some lubrication to start occurring between all of the different muscle fibers. 
If you can imagine a packet of spaghetti and you accidentally let some water get inside the packet of spaghetti, after a few days, those strands of spaghetti are going to stick together. Okay? And what we need is all of those strands of spaghetti to slide and glide. Okay, there's at least 30 seconds. Change feet. Same again. Holding onto the wall so that you don't have to spend any energy on balancing. You can totally relax, okay? Um, so your muscles are very much like that packet of spaghetti, okay? They are wrapped in a layer of what we call fascia, and they do have many, many, many different bundles of muscle fiber inside. And when we don't move, or when we put shoes on that are too tight, those bits of spaghetti, they get stuck together. They kind of Velcro together to try and give your body stability so that you can stay safer. Your body recognizes there's dysfunction happening. Oh my God, there's a dysfunctional situation here. How do I stay safe? Ah, I know, I better not fall over. I'll make the body more stable. And so it locks the area down and Velcros everything together. Okay, so now I've done the bottom of the foot. Now, importantly, I want to do the top of the foot, especially around this area. You can see very um, easily I've got hair and then no hair. Okay, right there, under the skin, there's like a little uh, strap going from the inside of the heel bone all the way around to the outside of the heel bone. And it's basically like a pulley and it keeps the uh, muscles uh, being more mechanically uh, uh, relevant. So, easiest way to do this is you can either just massage it yourself like this, okay, or you can use, you know, knuckles. And we just want to be working in there just gently and slowly. Again, it shouldn't feel too painful. I'm a firm believer that if you, you got a choice, you can make your muscles sing or you can make them scream. And I don't think screaming has got anything to do with relaxation and function, okay? If I'm being chased by some madman with a, with a knife, then I'm going to make all my muscles scream, okay? But in a general training situation, you can keep it much more gentle. Another way to do this is just to be on all fours and have that ball under there and just simply moving it side to side. It's a very easy way to do it, okay? Uh, obviously, you won't get as much pressure here, so if you wanted to get more weight, put the other foot on top, and that just sort of doubles the impact. But if that's painful, don't do it, okay? Perfect. So they're the two, uh, oh I better do the other foot, I'll give you time to do the other foot as well. <laughs> I'll just sit down and do this one. I, I prefer this one so that I can get right in there and give it, you know, I, I can't get around to the side when I'm in that previous all fours position. Okay, I like to get right around to the side of the ankle, uh, side of the heel bone, get behind that bumpy bone there, get beneath that bumpy bone there, and all the way around to the outside. Now if you're, if you're not flexible enough to do this, then you want to employ someone to do it for you, a family member, and you can easily do that by promising to do the same for them. Okay, so you get a barter system going and you'll all get healthier. Okay, so that's given me a lot of um, tactile stimulation and oxygen and nutrients flowing in and waste products flowing out. Um, and general mechanical release. Okay? Awesome. So we've done that. We've done the shoes, we've done the foam rolling, as it, as it were. Now, very simply, the next stage is to stretch. So, very easy calf stretch. You want to, so your hands on a wall, or your forearms on a wall, and all we're doing is putting one foot back and the other foot forward, and this heel has to stay flat, as if I put, uh, a hundred dollar note under the foot. Don't let the hundred dollar note be taken by anybody. Keep your foot flat. Also, don't let your foot turn out to the side. Okay, you can see by the lines on the ground here that my foot is externally rotated. So I want to have it basically straight ahead. And now I'm just going to look forwards and make sure my hips are not sticking out behind me. Bring my hips forward, stand nice and tall, and I should feel a lengthening in this muscle here, in this, in this uh, calf area here. And, it, and again, it shouldn't feel painful, just a stretch. Okay, so we're ready to start, we're in position, and then all I'm going to do with the upper body is reach across. So wherever I can reach, keeping that heel down. And we're going to go for 10 slow reaches. So this is number three, okay. And you, you notice that as you move, your t-shirt is lifting up, right? 
Well, that's what's happening to all the muscle fibers inside your torso, and they are pulling on all the muscle fibers in your hips, and they are pulling on all the muscle fibers in your leg, and they are pulling on all the muscle fibers in your calf. So it's all connected, okay? And I think that's nine and 10. Awesome, change legs. Be very strict. Make sure your foot is straight ahead. Make sure your foot doesn't turn out because you're being lazy or forgetful. Have the foot straight ahead, spread the toes if you can, and then step the other foot into a supportive position. Back leg not bent at this stage, although you can do the bent leg stretch, which just takes the stretch further down. We're just gonna concentrate on the stretch further up the leg today. Stand tall, hips forward, abdominals gently drawn in, and off we go, reaching across, okay? Once again, it should just feel like a gentle lengthening of the muscle, okay? You don't want to feel pain. It shouldn't feel like you're making a fire. You shouldn't see smoke coming out of your leg, all right? There's five. And the reason why when I move my arms, it affects my ankle, well, you saw that before when I tilted my foot to the side and I couldn't rotate anymore. Um, it's because the muscles are all connected. And in fact, it's more than that. The muscles are not actually all connected. There's a very um, strong belief, which has a lot of backing, that we don't actually have muscles. We don't have 600 muscles across the body. We actually have one muscle which hangs in about 600 places. Okay, 600 bags of electrified jelly hanging across the body, but they're all one sheet, like draping a sheet over a mannequin. And when I pull one corner of that sheet, the other corner moves, it goes from the toes to the nose all throughout the body, one uh, long piece of muscle and fascia and connective tissue. And it's up to us to try and restore the balance of energy and mechanical pressure throughout and neurological input throughout the whole sheet. Okay, so we've done our massage ball. We've done our calf stretch. Now we've only got two things to go, two exercises to go. We've got a towel and a single arm run. So here's the towel, and all we're gonna do is pick the towel up, do a little hamstring stretch, and then drop it. Now I'm not holding on to anything because I want to also train my balance, and my balance level is such that I can stand on one leg and do things, okay? but. You may be a person where that's dangerous or not doable, or you've got an injury to your knee or your ankle, so hold on, it's absolutely fine, okay? And all we're gonna do is get the toes and spread them out as wide as you can before you begin, because that gives you the best grip, right? And then scrunch them together and under, and pick up the towel, and then straighten the knee, bend the knee, drop the towel, change feet. And stand on that foot with toes spread, spread the floating foot toes, scrunch the towel, pick up the knee to about hip height, kick the foot out to your length, to your ability of flexibility, okay? And then drop it back down again. And like I said, I'm gonna do that without holding on because I want more of a balance challenge. So I've done two, here comes number three. Pick it up, extend it, and put it down. Change sides, shifting weight to the other leg, Make sure your bum doesn't relax, keep the hip turned on, keep the toes spread, pick it up, extend it, bring it back, drop it down. That's four, we're doing 10. Spread the toes on both feet, scrunch the picking up foot, pick it up, extend it, and drop it down. Good, that's five. Scrunch, pick, extend, lower, that's six, and Seven, whoop, jeez, nearly fell over. <laughs> so this is where I'm at, right? If you start falling over like that, that's a good indication that you need to focus a bit and that this is indeed enough challenge for you at this stage. That's eight, I believe. Uh, yep. Instructors can't count. No. Uh, don't ever listen to me. Just looking at your sexy feet. <laughs> so I can't concentrate. Nine, <laughs> and last one is number 10. Beautiful. So that's a really good exercise. Um, Kitty Cat had another exercise which I hadn't seen before, which I really liked, and it was for people that have arches that are a little bit dropped. If you have what they call flat feet, um, good news is it's probably not a, a death sentence, okay? It just means that there's some muscle length that we need to maybe uh, reactivate and shorten a little bit. And what she did, which I thought was ingenious, 
Um, now, if I was a person with an injury like plantar fasciitis, where I get the pain in the sole of my foot when I'm running, or if I already have really tight calves, or if I already have an arch that looks like mine, where it's basically a, a normal slash high arch, I would not do this exercise because I don't need to over-strengthen these muscles at this stage. I could do it. I've got flat feet -ish. Kitty Cat has flatter feet than I do, so she could do this one and benefit. And all she did was she sat, and I've never even tried this, first time live again, mm -hmm. put the foot at the start of the towel and then try and draw the towel towards you, which I think is a great exercise. But again, if you've already got short calves, then maybe you don't need to add that pressure here. But Okay, the towel is now at its limit, and then I would straighten it back out and either do another rep or change feet. Okay? So that's a really good one. Mr. Shan likes your t shirt. He says he listens to it when he works out. Yeah, me too. Metallica, <laughs> Iron Maiden, like, yeah, the works. Okay. Yeah. Um, last exercise. This is the last thing we're doing together today, and this is going to be single leg running. Right, that sounds a bit counterintuitive, right? <laughs> but what I'm going to do is get my foot. Now, luckily, I've got these lines here. I'm going to put the center of my heel and the second and third toe straddling that. Now, if I was to put both feet in that alignment, and I encourage you to do the same thing, you will feel like you're like this. Okay? You're not. You're parallel. If you were going to go skiing on snow or water and you wanted to go straight ahead, it's the line between the center of the heel and the second and third toe that need to be parallel for your skis to be facing straight ahead. Okay, so this is what we call neutral. It is not the holy grail. It is not the be all and end all. Neutral is just a place where you're the closest to all possible movements and the joint can experience as much rest as possible when you're at rest, rather than being, say like, mm, that's not a neutral lower back. Okay, so I'm going to feel pressure in those bones after a while. So what I want to do is get my pelvis and rib cage to sort of balance a little bit. Same with all of your joints. So center of the heel on a line, second and third toe straddling that line as well. And then I'm just going to create a bit like that dragging the towel exercise we just did. I'm going to create some slight shortness to my foot. I'm not gripping on like a monkey. I'm just bringing the the, the t big toe and the spot behind the big toe gently towards the heel. Just, just uh, lifting the arch slightly. Okay? And then I'm going to lift the other uh, uh, arm, the back arm, the leg. Lift the other leg off the <laughs> ground. I'm going to stand tall and then I'm going to run 20 times with my arms. So you go as fast as you can go. But if you're doing this, then that's too fast. Concentrate on balance, stability, and being graceful like Cirque du Soleil. Are you ready? So we're going to go one. Two, keep your foot short, stand tall. Three, four, turn the torso. Five, six, don't just flap the arms, right? You want to turn the shoulder forward, turn the other shoulder forward. And importantly, turn the other shoulder backwards, turn the other shoulder backwards. Nine, 10, 11, feel on the calf now, right? 12, 13, stand tall, squeeze your bum. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good work. So probably just shake the demons out. <laughs> demons be gone. Demons be gone. Demons be gone. Other foot. Heel in the center and just get the foot aligned there. Spread the toes. Um, you may not have a hobbit foot like I do, but um, that's because I've been wearing barefoot shoes and being barefoot for so long. I've been wearing these kind of shoes for at least 10 years. And one of the, the there's people that poo-poo them, but one of the great things about them is that each toe gets a little home, and there's a layer of fabric on the outside of each toe, which just naturally spreads them for you. You can buy socks like that too, and they're really good to wear. Okay, so spreading the foot, it's in neutral and parallel and straight ahead, so that we're not just collapsing through the knee, all right? We've got ourselves in neutral, we're standing up tall, abs gently drawn in, lift the leg off the ground, and then here comes our running, ready? One, turn the shoulders, turn the spine. Two, the arms are secondary, turn the spine. Four, five, stand tall. Six, seven. I'm much better on this side because I'm right handed. A right handed person has a much better set of balance on their left leg. This is the way it works. Uh, lost count, typical trainer, completely Ten. crap. Three, four, <laughs> no, no, 12, third Jesus, 13, 14, 15. 16, nearly fell over, 17, 18, 
1920. Perfect. Okay, then what I would do is I would go back to my towel picking up exercise, towel picking up exercise, and then come back to this guy here. Okay, and just repeating sets of that. If you have a look over here at the board, we did our, our massage, our self myofascial release with our spiky ball or our golf ball. Okay, so you just do that once at the beginning. Then we did our stretch, our calf stretch against the wall. Just do that once at the beginning. And then we did picking up the towel and single leg run. Do that bit there as many times as you want, maybe two, three, four times. And when you're finished, then come back to doing a little stretch for your calf and doing a little massage for the sole of your foot. And that's probably going to be a good place to start for you. Um, as usual, this is part one. We will be doing a part two maybe next week. Sometime during the week we'll do a part two to this where we get a little bit more advanced. Okay, that's pretty much it. I do have a question for you. A friend ah. of mine who has um, pain in her foot and when she does plyometric work like squat jumps without her shoes, it hurts. What would your advice be for her? She still wants to be fit and active. Oh, Manisha, hi. Hey, Manisha. She just did a run. This ah, morning, well done. Good work, Manisha. Oh, did the run. Sorry, you did the single leg. Oh, you run. did this run. Awesome. Okay, nice. well done. Um, uh, so going back to your friend who yep. has the pain in the foot, where in the foot is it? Is the first question we need to know. Don't don't really know. Just know that there's pain and she can't wear. Uh, probably, probably under yeah. the, the plantar fascitis. I, I think. Say, yeah. Probably on the bottom. Probably. Most of us get the problems. Um, okay. Then, first thing is, I'm not a orthopedic surgeon, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physiotherapist, I'm not a podiatrist. So, um, maybe getting a consultation with one of those. I would prefer that you see a physiotherapist. I think they're probably the best people for this kind of question. Failing that, a podiatrist. Um, I, I think that either of those two would be the best place to go, okay? And get their opinion. What I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hazard a guess here, Okay, because I'm flying blind, I've never seen you before, and this is always a case-by-case -case thing. Mm -hmm. But if it is a problem with the bottom of the foot hurting, then, actually you can have a look at my feet. If it is a problem with this tissue under here being painful, well, this is not separate, this doesn't exist in a vacuum. This is the continuation of this, is the continuation of this, is the continuation all the way up the body. And quite often, we have people who are um, quite forward and eager in their lives. It's going to sound a little bit hippie and spiritual here, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mechanics. If I'm leaning forwards all the time, what I'm doing is, that was too far forwards, what I'm doing is I, I have to have a look at my toes. When I lean forwards just a little bit, my toes automatically have to monkey grip the ground. And so instantly, the, the muscles along the sole of the foot which are connected to and part of the same system as the calves, hamstrings, back muscles, and up to the scalp and neck, okay? There's one big, imagine if I got a, a long towel and I wrapped it down the back of my body, so I'll make this very easy to understand. If I stood here on this, okay, and then pull this all out of my body, okay, it should also go over my head, but you can see the connection of the muscles in the back of the body to the sole of the foot and to the neck and the head, okay? Now, if I lean forwards a bit, this towel was not asked to get shorter, it was asked to be made longer. And so it's under total activation and stretch all the time, purely because I'm a forward-leaning person. So maybe when you can remember, think, oh, where am I standing? Am I standing on the toes too much? Should I get my weight evenly back a little bit? Not totally on the heels, because that's the person who's asleep and not ready to react. A little bit forward of the heel, in the middle of the foot, is a great place to be. It's just a general posture. Now, also, that self myofascial release on the bottom of the foot, I would be doing that. I would have this under my desk when I'm typing on Facebook. I would have this by the couch when I'm watching Netflix. I'd be doing this a lot, but it shouldn't hurt. And then these stretches here, mm -hmm. These are really good things to do as well, just to gently start training that length. Um, I wouldn't be doing jumping. Jumping hurts it at the moment. Okay, wear shoes when you want to do your jumping. But if you keep doing this, eventually you can transition out of shoes or transition from shoes that are quite built up and quite supportive. You can transition into shoes that are more flexible. But don't do it in one big leap, do it gradually. And I think that's about all we have to say. But please message us 
we'd be happy to talk to you private message about that afterwards. Awesome, thank you. Great pleasure. Thanks folks for joining today. Um, stay safe. Remember, good sleep, colourful food, lots of water, and turn off the news. Okay, stop looking at all of the, the negativity. Just check in maybe once in the morning, or once in the evening, then get it out of your life. Do something healthy. And watch than... us. Watch us. Yeah. Watch all the great fitness videos that Ooh. all of the, the, the fit pros are being forced to do now. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys.